What's going on guys? I appreciate you joining me on the Salivate to Mindset channel. Uh, today I have, um, nothing to like show off or anything. I just wanted to kind of talk about this industry and the level of, I don't know, deceit, bullshit, lies that they propagate for you to pretty much buy whatever it is that they sell you on that moment at that time on that year. Um, I'm a builder, right? So I like building guns. I like putting things together. Um, it started by just swapping some parts here and there, like little parts, like, um, you know, the furniture. So it started with the sights, started with, um, the hand guards started with, uh, the, you know, the, the main hand grip, like stuff like that. Right. So, um, this stuff went from, I don't I, I think I've been building for about like about five years or more now maybe like six, but, um, what I've come to see about this industry is they want you to believe that everything on the market is the top seller, the best thing on the market, no matter what you do. And if it's a name that doesn't have, um, you know, some sponsor, some grand thumb or T-Rex or Mojo, backed name behind them that it's garbage and you shouldn't use it right so there's name brands that you'll know that i'll speak on that i'm sure you either have or you're trying to get right now like uh trigicon you know eotech uh Lo loophole um you know there's there's geisley there's so many big names that it in turn it almost makes you sick to your stomach because you know you can't afford them, right? So I'm talking to the the poor, right? The I, I fucking hate that term, but whatever. It's like a term in this industry, honestly. But um, the thing is, is I'm a person who owns one business. I'm trying to create another business. I have two children I have to provide for. I have one mortgage we're paying. Um, uh, another, uh, this is another building that, you know, clearly I, <laughs> I'm paying a lot of shit, a truck, a vehicle, two dogs, like there a lot, a lot going on in my life. And if you want to call me a poor, because I have to skim certain things instead of buying a gun that's manufactured by Geisley or Sig or whatever have you company out there, Daniel Defense, some bullshit, which I would never support Daniel Defense because of how much they are involved with the ATF. But anyway, so these are kinds of things that I would never legitimately give a shit about what people think because I know that I can build a solid, solid weapon for the amount of years that I've been putting in work on these things. Um, there's certain things I will not do. I will not change uh, barrels and I will not put, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, muzzle devices on. Not because I can't, but because I have not done it yet and I don't want to act like I know what I'm doing. I have two guys that do that with me and or for me and I'm starting to learn a whole lot about it and it's really not that hard, but the timing, quite difficult. Um, so you need washers and stuff for muzzle devices and stuff like that. So then you need, um, you know, certain lock locking mechanisms like, well, I shouldn't say mechanisms, um, solvents like uh, Loctite, a certain type uh, would be green that holds the best um, for, you know, certain high measures of heat. Um, anyway, these are things that I'm going to work on soon so that it would complete everything from head to toe from butt to tip on a weapon of like an AR-15 platform. So uh, when it comes to an AR-15 uh, chambered in 5.56, 2.23, or a 300, <clears throat> excuse me, 300 blackout, 
I will know exactly what to do in pretty much every single way. But um, you know that that come that comes from years of working on things, breaking things, tearing things apart, wishing I never did something, wish I, wishing I never bought something, wishing I bought two of something, wishing, man, like, listen, honestly, the list goes on. The list goes on. Um, <clears throat> but this industry is filled with a shit ton of lies, and it wants you to believe that every single gun out there that has been put on the market is the best gun on the, on the market, plain and simple. From, I don't know, CZ to SIG, to Glock, to fucking High Point, right? It doesn't matter. They want you to believe that your gun is the best. Their gun you bought is, is, is no one can match it, right? When in fact, all things fail, all things. You put enough tension on something, they break, plain and simple. So from a building standpoint, I would legitimately tell you guys, don't believe the hype. Don't let them fool you. When you see something on on um, the wall, don't just buy it because it looks cool. Know who built it, what parts are in it, um, where it comes from, what um, you know, what chamber the 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 round comes in that it's it's firing. Um, definitely don't get anything chambered solely in two two three because you're gonna be upset when you put a five five six round in there. Um, which could call it a, cause a catastrophic failure, to be honest. Um, 300 blackouts, super expensive. Only get that if you can afford it, can do so. If not, stay with 556. Five, like, there's a lot of stuff in this industry that are led you to believe like EOTech is the best in the world, where I have two of them and I don't even use them like that. Um, I don't really care for it. To be honest with you, it's cool, you know, like it's it's an EOTech. I'm so cool that I got them. But really, to be honest with you, I'd much prefer Sig Romeo 7s. They have such an awesome sight picture. They're stupid durable. They're, they're really good <laughs> weapon uh, optics. And people would talk shit because I have an EOTech sitting there, but yet I'm running a, a, a Sig Sauer... Uh, um, Romeo 7 they would immediately look at me like I'm an idiot and what they don't realize is it's just not my preference I don't really care for the 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 reticle as much I do don't get me wrong I like it on certain weapons but I don't really like it on my M4s and my AKs so I put my AK uh KP9 I have an EOTech on there and have an EOTech on my 14 inch um, pistol, piston driven um, uh, AR-15. So that, and that comes, that upper is actually the only piston driven I have. And I'm gonna keep it that way. That's just like the worst of the worst backup of all backups. Um, that is, it was kind of like an experiment, which I actually do like it a lot. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it's it's called uh, a a uh, a wolf a one or wolf something or other. Just look up wolf 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 a one. I believe it is. Look up the the company wolf something or other, and you'll see like it's got a it's got like a an old school AR fit um M16 look to it where it's got like the triangular uh hand guards. It's just badass. I just really liked it. It has a fixed sump front sight post. Um just it look into it and see what you like and see what you think. And if you want to get it, it's really cheap. It's only 500 and something bucks for the entire upper, including the BCG. I definitely had to um swap out the uh the charging handle because it was just not for me. But who knows you might like the original and you might keep it but regardless there's there's companies out there that'll tell you that they are the best of the best of the best and i have so many rifles because of some of those lies and then i swapped some parts from those rifles because i inevitably didn't like them and i put them onto other different things so that i could like them on something else on some more mission specific weapons right so you know, when building, when building, you come to almost you, like you, you don't have a plan. And this is the worst part of it, right? So you need to make a plan, 
before you go and spend that kind of money because I mean you're gonna end up spending about two thousand dollars more than what you should have spent if you ha if you had made a plan before you started purchasing things especially the worst is to go out and buy some shit because it looks cool there's um there's a set of hand guards that I ended up buying and I got rid of and I I'm I had to rebuy them because they weren't cool for a certain gun. And then come to find out, man, th those things were badass, but they would have they would have been on something else. So um, I'm a big BCM guy. I'm a big bootleg guy. And those are my main weapon um, handguards. Those are like my main weapon handguards. So if <clears throat> if I use them, not only is it a solid piece, but to be quite honest with you, it's pretty budget friendly. The reason why is because I have a lot of shit going on in my life and I can't, I have to cut corners on certain places. So I need it to be sturdy, reliable, and a little cheap, to be honest with you. But I also need it to be functional, right? The, if, if you have a rifle, you want it to function because that thing is going to potentially save your life. So what I inevitably end up doing is I cut costs to get certain things and then I I big up on certain things like uh, so I go big on triggers so I'm a big Geisley trigger person I don't need the whole Geisley frame I don't need the upper and the lower I just need the Geisley trigger um, I use Anderson on quite a bit of my stuff um, Air, Aero Precision I use them quite a bit those guys are you know 120 bucks for a lower and then you put your parts in it. So it is technically, essentially, whatever weapon parts you put into it, that's the real lower, right? The the stamp on the outside, who gives a shit what it says? This The, you know, the pins and stuff, who cares if it's a mil-spec pin or if it's some cool, um, I don't know, Strike Industries setup where you can't, you can't, see you can see certain differences does not matter it's it's honestly it's all surface bullshit right what matters on the weapon the most is not what's on the weapon it's what's in the weapon that gets that thing to continue to function correctly appropriately and in the time where you need it the most right um, sometimes now don't get me wrong. You can get mud. Like you saw in my last video, you can get mud in the BCG and it stops. I just took it home, pulled out a big rock. That's what was stopping the weapon. So if I would have field stripped it, pulled it out, took that off, probably shook it, took out the rock, put it back in and I would have sent it and sure it would have kept working. But I also made sure that I did not thoroughly clean it. Cause when I, this week, when I go out, um, I'm going to use that weapon as it is. I want to see if that's going to, if that was the problem, if that one rock, which it was a pretty damn big rock is the problem is the issue. And if that is the case, I can't be mad at a weapon for doing its job. And then a rock comes in the way and thro literally throws a wrench in the, in the mix and it stops working. Well, what do you expect? This is why they call it field stripping, right? So I should have just did that, but I didn't now what I'm going to do is fire it, see what it's like, see, test more. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then I got to go back to the drawing board, right? But <clears throat> I go with Geisley triggers. I go with BCGs made by Fail Zero. Um, I pretty much use Fail Zero on, on every single thing that I use. Um, there's I've, I've seen people talk shit on them. And then I've seen more people talk very highly about them than not. So... You know, you can get whatever BCG that works for you, but for me, they're they're around two hundred and some change. So you figure you got a Geisley trigger that's almost three hundred bucks. I'm just gonna use easy numbers so that we can go along with this. But to be honest with you, it's probably gonna be a little more. So just keep that in mind. So let's say two hundred and fifty for um, the Geisley trigger. Um, which I know it's a lot, it's a good amount more, but we'll say 250 for the guys in the trigger. Now you're using 250 for the, um, the BCG, the fail zero, which it's a little bit more. So that's 
500 right there, right? Um, then you have uh, your barrel. I like air precision stuff. I don't know what you might like. I also sometimes buy shit that's a little cheaper. Some, you know, mil spec regular, you know, um, um, barrel. But it's a good barrel made by a pretty decent company, decently rated company. So <clears throat> you end up getting those for about <clears throat> sometimes like a hundred bucks. And that's good if you're trying to get uh, a rifle just up and running. But if you want a really good barrel, I mean, you can do Daniel Defense, which I hate Daniel Defense, but you can do that. You can do... Um, uh, I, I like Arrow, like I said, and you know, they're pretty decent there. I last one I bought from them was about a hundred and I think it was like 20 bucks at a show, which would have been about almost 200. Um, if I would have bought it from their site or something like that. So I got a, I got a really good deal on that. Um, let me see. <sighs> uh, I think Anderson does. I, I don't, I'm not even big, big, big on anderson like that but i do got i constantly get their frames so there you go a frame right the frame for anderson was about 110 120 bucks um then you got the upper which is usually around like 60 bucks 65 bucks depending on what housing you want to go to go with um then you got your hand guards so let's just say the the again the um the lower was a hundred bucks and then the um the upper was 50 bucks right so the up the the smaller casing on the upper right where you have the forward assist and stuff um that um uh, uh 50 bucks or let's let's call it a hundred just in case right so this way it'll round up a little more correctly so you got five six seven ish right now you have excuse me guys True Perfection, Jamil speaking, I'm going to help you. All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, so, let's see. Uh, so, that's five, six, like 657. Let's just say seven, right? Um, now, you got the barrel. Let's say you went with a really good barrel, which I would tell you to go through a really good barrel because that's what, you know, that's a big part of it, right? Uh, so, do 200 about 200 on your barrel so you got you got 657 seven eight nine that's 900 dollars for your weapon uh to work well right well if you cannot afford a geisley trigger and you just can't see spending 250 dollars or more on a geisley trigger which is listen guys completely understandable Cut that cost, get a regular mil spec uh, internal kit and put it together, learn how to do that so you can put it together and you don't need somebody else to do it either for you. And then you now have, let's say 50 bucks on just the internal kit. So you went from five to seven to now to pretty much like five, right? So now we're at five and then we're putting the barrel on at seven. So now you still are under a thousand dollars to build a rifle to complete one, right? So now what you need is you need a buffer tube, a buffer spring, a buffer weight, um, a, um, a stock or brace, depending on the length of your barrel and a set of hand guards. And now you're complete. You are 100% complete on a rifle and you're still yet under a thousand dollars so now you go with let's say magpul right you go with magpul furniture so you got your hand um <clears throat> or excuse me your buttstock or your brace if you're going with brace you're gonna have to go with like a sb tactical or something like that if you're going uh shorter but if you're going longer um you can at 16 you can easily utilize a magpul and use the rest of the magpul furniture right so you got magpul stock which is probably only like 60 bucks so we're going to cut that down to 50 right um then you you have your hand guards if you can't afford uh let's let's go let's rewind back 
you need your buffer spring, 10 bucks. Um, you need your buffer weight, probably 60 bucks. We'll cut that in and we'll say that's 50. So that's a hundred dollars more now. So you went from seven, now you're at eight. Um, you need the buffer two. So the buffer two would probably be around 20 bucks. Or if you got gypped, maybe 40, 50. I've seen them shits go way too high for absolutely no reason. But you can get a buffer tube and kit for around 60 bucks, which that's what I would go with. So it gives you both the buffer, the tube, um, and I believe the spring, all three actually. So it sh you should have all three in that and um, that would help you mitigate certain headaches and costs. So let's just let's just put that one there. That, that'll be like a $70 thing, right? So you have $770. Um, now you need handguards. So with the handguards, you can do like BCM and literally, not even joking, they're super budget friendly. I've gotten some BCM stuff and they're, man, that is a solid company. I love that company. So the BCM stuff, probably legitimately at like maybe 150 to 200 for, um, for the handguards. So that's 770. Well, we're, I, I, I'm just going to knock it down to 50. So 750. And then, um, you got eight, nine, you got 950 for, um, uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> Nine fifty for the handguards. Legitimately, you're still at under a thousand dollars. So let's put those. Let's put taxes on and all that other stuff. You're at about a thousand dollars. You have a full functioning weapon. You have all the pins you need. The entire kit you need. The um the spring kits that you would need. You have the trigger system that you would need. You have the and, and um by the way the triggers uh or excuse me the the lowers um when you buy a lower package it comes with a regular stock based um um uh pistol grip but uh, which is your operator grip but. Uh, which <clears throat> you can get, <clears throat> excuse me, you can get some of those, like an air precision one, and I ain't gonna lie, it's like a hundred bucks or so, but they give you a Magpul, um, they give you a Magpul, uh, grip, which is nice because normally the Magpul grips are like 20 to 50 bucks anyway. So you're, you're not missing out on anything. You're legitimately getting pretty damn good, um, equipment. Um, and if it's not Magpul, it's something really close to, and it's really good. I like it. Um, let me see what else. So now, so now you spent a thousand dollars and you, the only thing left you don't have is a muzzle device that I would go with. If you are planning on canning, uh, which if you guys don't know what cans are, it's a suppressor. If you're planning on canning, then get a muzzle device that you know is going to be appropriate for whatever it is that you are going to get, whether it is um, uh, Surefire or if it's uh, like mine, a dead air, whatever you want to go with, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you get that muzzle device and put it on that weapon and, and make sure it's a dedicated one for that. I have all my rifles except one, all my rifles that I plan on using with the can, every single one of them is, has uh, a dead air uh, muzzle device on. There's only one AR-15 that I choose not to do that, and that is my full 16 inch rifle, because to me, I, I really don't see me ever using that thing. And if I were to use that, to be honest with you, I want it loud, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a sniper. So I want it loud so that this way, if my guys are downrange in the field, I can use that for whatever reason I'm not with them. And I can sit back and pop off a few rounds, take out certain targets and move my, my um, AO down to another spot and just start sending down more, more suppressive fire. You know what I mean? Get them distracted at me, get them firing at me while the guys who are closest to them use their suppressors and get into whatever position that would mitigate more threats. But anyway, so this, this is a way to mitigate so much cost. If you go in with a plan and you make a thousand dollar rifle out of some really good parts, and 
you don't have to spend, I don't know, $2,000 off buying one gun off the shelf. You literally just saved a whole thousand dollars by building it yourself. Now, guess what you have? You have a thousand dollars to put on backup sites, a, a main optic, a flashlight, um, some angled grips, um, maybe some aesthetics to make it look cool because we all like that. I don't care what anybody says. Um, also, um, some burn proofing, right? So I'm a big burn proofer. Um, a lot of people say, oh, you know, just wear gloves. Do you feel like wearing gloves in 90 degree heat? I don't. Plus, not to mention some of the gloves that you, you use, if you've been out shooting long enough and you grab your can to just knock it off real quick just to cool it down for a little while, that shit burns through your hands sometimes. So you might actually, as crazy as it sounds, you might want to invest in an oven mitt. But just one oven mitt so that this way you can grab your, your can, pop it off, toss it into the snow, let it cool down real fast um, or rain, whatever, whatever your situation is. Right. And if you need to say you have to put it in your pack real quick, that thing is em emitting way too much heat and it's printing so much that somebody with IR can see that thing shining from a mile away. So wrap it up in your in your um, in your oven mitt and toss it in your pack and go go get into some cold water if that's <laughs> whatever the case may be for you right so um anyway there's things you can do to mitigate certain costs because the biggest thing that you want to do is build something reliable not what anybody else is telling you to build you want to build something super reliable so mil spec stuff is the best way to go please do not get anything commercial um, commercial is probably the worst thing to do. My 16 inch rifle is actually a commercial. Um, I don't even remember what it is, but, uh, it's, it's a commercial build and I just can't see me getting rid of it cause it is still my first, uh, AR 15 ever. Um, <clears throat> But I did love that gun. I even got it Cerakoted. That thing, it's it's badass. But I would never use that thing other than using it for long distance because a 16-inch rifle is just absolutely ridiculous to do, um, you know, CQB with and stuff. Are there guys that do it? There's guys that take saws and use and do CQB with that. So cool. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not telling you not to. But what I'm saying is, is I personally wouldn't want to be that guy. Um, but, you know, this, uh, this leads me kind of to a story. I just bought, um, I just bought an upper that I saw on the wall, right? And the reason why I bought the upper was because it had a bootleg ink, um, a set of uppers from rear to, to, um, from front to rear. Um, it had a barrel that was unknown. I don't know the barrel. And I'm, I'm glad I did purchase this because come to find out the barrel was a Russian made barrel and it has five prongs instead of four. We'll get into that in a second. Um, and it had um, the Sandman S uh, muzzle device or the Sandman d muzzle device. So legitimately it was every single thing that I would have put in there. And then we popped open the top and guess what we got? We got a BCM fighter, um, uh, gunfighter uh, charging handle and a fail zero BCG. This was a match made in heaven, heaven for me. All that together would have been probably, so let's just do the math real quick. Again, simple math. I'm not going to go into taxes and I'm not going to go into a bunch of crazy shit, but simple math, let's say 250 for the handguards. 150 200 for the we'll say 200 for the uh, barrel um for the uh the rest of the o of the upper uh let's say 100 bucks that's um two three fifty four fifty so that's 450 right there um then you got the bcg would have been 250 so that's four five six that that's seven seven hundred right there um and what else? Oh, and the um, the charging handle. That's easy, a hundred bucks. That's almost eight hundred bucks right there. So you got two, uh, let's say two fifty, right? Um, another two hundred. That's four fifty. Five fifty. 
six, seven. That's eight. Yeah, that's eight, eight, legitimately 800 bucks. Maybe even more, actually. I'm coming to think about it now. But let's just call it a day at eight, right? You got 800 bucks that is sitting there on a shelf. And I looked at it, and I'm not going to lie. I, I'll even put it in this video. The, um, the person who put on the muzzle device, they fucked it up. They gummed it up pretty heavy. And this is what you don't do. You go to somebody who's a professional, not somebody who's doing this shit off of YouTube. Look at that. Completely timed incorrectly. And what is that? Is that fucking, like you said, it's aluminum or it something. Like, like, what is that? It almost looks like aluminum foil. But... <laughs> it's ridiculous. Wow. Whatever so, it is, it's too big. Yep. So guys, take it to a professional. Don't don't go and be that guy, whoever did this. But it almost looks like they cut it out of a soda can, but I can't tell. <laughs> I'm kind of glad this happened though, because I so when I bought this, this entire upper, the handguard, two hundred and some change, almost three. The um the upper itself alone, um, about you know, sixty five, seventy bucks, a sure. hundred bucks, depending on where you get it from. Uh and the the BCG, 200 and some change, almost three. And the charging handle, probably about 100. And I got all of that for 350 bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah. So, yeah, I made out. So, and I'm just, I'm grateful that just came off so easy. And it's, yeah, and I'm glad it wasn't rock set. Because if it was rock set, yeah, yeah, we would have to, yeah, we would have to, have to use a, a uh, heat gun. Yeah. And sometimes and, uh, you got to put water and hold it in water, depending yeah. on the set. Yep. So, all right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll put this in the video. And um, you know, it was a, it was a it was a concern of mine, but it wasn't big enough for me to. The costs outweighed the 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 negatives, right? So, I purchased it at three hundred and fifty bucks because I knew that it was one used. I'm not buying anything new, uh, excuse me, used at new price. It was used. It was gummed up pretty heavy where if it was another person, they didn't know what was going on. He could have, he could have hiked up the price heavy, but it was me he was selling it to. And I bought literally nine weapons off this man already. So there's no way he's going to treat me like shit, right? So then there was knowing what the cost of everything would be because I purchase all those pretty much regularly. So I'm getting a weapon that, a weapon upper, all right, that I would have essentially had built on my own for half the cost, a little less than half the cost because I just, I straight up knew what I was getting into. So this is the kind of stuff you guys need to pay attention to. Excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so again... Um, this guy who I purchased it off of, really nice guy, I've been dealing with him a while, um, he also knows that I build, so he, you know, he didn't even play games with me, he said, you know, what, uh, uh I said, you know, what can you do for me, he's like, what's your price, he said, he says that to me, so, um, I told him I can do 350 to 400, but with all the problems that I see, I'm not exactly sure I'm going to be able to take that muzzle device off and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it wasn't like rock set or something like that. Cause then I couldn't take it off myself. Um, which I didn't anyway, but, um, I looked into that and I saw that it was still worth the buy. So I bought it and this, this weapon was so in, inappropriately timed. It was insane. So, um, Timing is, it just means, you know, what washers you put on and you put your muzzle device on and you get it to set, but you, the way you set it when you're torquing it down, um, the prongs, whatever, which way they go. So then you might have two, two coming out to the side. So where that the gases go this way, you might have one that goes straight up and down. You might have one that goes the through three, right? So my, you have one that goes straight up and then two that go straight down, uh, or to the sides down. That's the one I have and um on one of them at least and it was time to where two two were going to come out at one at like your three o'clock and your five o'clock and then another one was going to come out at maybe you know eight nine o'clock 
So now I'd say nine, 10 o'clock. And that's insane. Like you would never want that, right? So <clears throat> we got it timed correctly. Um, now they're one's coming out at uh, seven and the other one's coming out at five and the other one's coming out at 12. So all the gases are being expelled correctly. Now, if the muzzle device was on and I put the can on, I, I, you probably would never know or never see the difference, but that's not the point. If you have to take it off, I'm sorry guys, one second about that guys. Um, anyway, all glory to God, business is good. But anyway, so um, listen, uh, long story short, get into get into doing research on your weapons before you purchase them get into understanding that there is no such thing as an end-all be-all and mitigate as much cost as you can so that this way you're leaving room for optics you're leaving room for furniture you're leaving room for hand guards you're leaving room for grips you're leaving room for triggers you're leaving room for all these things that you see these Gucci guns all have that you admire. That yeah, listen, I mean, we all want a Gucci gun. We all do. Um, but when you start to realize you don't need to make a Gucci gun to make a very functional weapon, you you legitimately can do very well for yourself. Um, there's nothing wrong with going Magpul in the very beginning and then upgrading later. Magpul is very, very good, and they're yeah, they're very cheap. But the polymer that they make, man, they're they're solid. They might not be free floating, but who gives a shit? Um, free floating is a to me it's a much better system. It keeps your hand guards from getting hot real fast. Um, and there's a lot of you know issues that can occur with um your standard issued mil spec stuff, but I'm just a free-floating guy. You don't have to be, especially in the very beginning. I actually love Magpul stuff, and I might even build a very, very budget build just to show people that you can have a rifle that is super, super budget, and you can have maybe a good, really good trigger. Make sure that your um, your buffer weight is appropriate for the, for the length of the barrel, and... And also the, um, the, what do you call it? The, uh, the spring, cause you, you need to make sure those are on point. Um, and the buffer tube, the buffer tube is very key. You don't want them too long and you just want either a carbine or not. Um, anyway, <clears throat> with that being said, you can make a rifle. I can, I bet you I can make a rifle under a thousand. I bet you I can make a rifle under 700. I can make a really good rifle under 700 i can't go too i can't go too too far other than that 700 is about where now you're losing some spot like now you're losing a spot on the the top scale of can this thing even work anymore but around 700 bucks i can make a functional rifle and i i'm to be honest with you I probably won't have a stock on it i won't have a brace on it it'll just be the the buffer tube but you know what it'll still work and it's still functional you can take a uh, and I'm not even joking. Um, you can take uh, a tennis ball, slit it down, pop it on top of the 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 head of the um, the buffer tube, and then take tape and wrap it around. And now you have a very comfortable um, buffer tube. You know what I mean? It's not a stock. It's not a brace. It's legit a buffer tube. But you know, this is this is going as budget as you can, right? So some people believe that Geisley is the way to go, Sig's the way to go, you know, and all this other, these are Daniel Defense and all these other companies when legitimately there's some solid steel and aluminum companies out there that aren't really that bad and they can mitigate costs for you and they can help you on your journey building a good rifle. So, um, like I said, please, you need to build two rifles um, just in case if one goes down, you, then you have a backup and you need two good solid pistols. And then after that, maybe one good shotgun, the shotgun's all up to you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm a Mossberg person. I'm also, uh, I, I like semi-automatic stuff. So I, uh, I do a lot of, um, oh shoot. I forget their name right now. I'm having a brain fart, but black aces. 
I do black aces stuff. So they're pretty damn awesome. Um, you know, there's, there's other things, you know, you can do to see whatever it is that you want and, and find out in time what you want. But if you're building rifles, I hope this video helped you because I've gone through years of building and have made so many mistakes. I don't want to see you guys make them. So I just figured I might want to make this video for those who are building, who are, have the intent to build and what corners you want to cut and what corners you don't want to cut. Um, also, you know, even charging handles, guys, charging handles can get really expensive. If you're not going to use a can, don't use that cut. What's up, bro? If you're not going to use a can, don't use a charging handle. That is, I'll be right with you. Um, don't use a charging handle that is made specifically for, uh, suppressors. You don't want to do some shit like that. So, um, anyway, that being said, I got to get to work. So, Get out there and train. Love you guys. Be safe. Peace. And make sure you do your research.